Hey everyone, Lauren Carpenter here with Fantasy Pros and thank you very much for tuning in to our YouTube series. In this video, I'm going to discuss five second year breakout candidates for 2021. Now last year we did have a couple of rookies that just exploded onto the fantasy scene. Justin Herbert, quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers, as well as Justin Jefferson, wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. They just made waves in the 2020 season in their rookie campaign. But there were several players from this class that eh, didn't do so well. But that doesn't mean that we should completely ignore them for the upcoming season simply because they disappointed us last year. So without further ado, let's get into five second year breakout candidates for 2021. Jerry Judy, wide receiver, Denver Broncos. Now I know that Jerry Judy's season last year wasn't awesome. He finished as the wide receiver 44 and half PPR with 113 targets, 52 receptions, and three touchdowns. That led to only a 46% catch rate, but not all of that is his fault. In fact, 26 of those targets were completely uncatchable. The one thing that Jerry Judy has going for him, more than anything else that he has heading into his sophomore year in 2021, is Cortland Sutton will be back on the field for the Denver Broncos. He will assume that alpha wide receiver role and spread out opposing defenses. So whether it's Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater or maybe even Aaron Rodgers, Jerry Judy's route running ability by itself will be able to give him the opportunity to improve and finish much better than a wide receiver 44. Plus, he's going to have a real offseason, training camp, and preseason to work on his catch rate. And our next candidate is the Kansas City Chiefs running back, Clyde Edwards Elaire. I am very excited about his upcoming season. But last year, he was drafted in the first round and pretty much disappointed everybody who did that. He finished as the RB22 in half PPR scoring, which averaged about 12.3 points over 13 games, and that is not what you want from your first round draft pick. That's abysmal. But the biggest problem for Clyde Edwards Alaire, it wasn't his talent, but it was his volume. So before Bell got going in the Chiefs offense, Clyde Edwards Alaire was the RB9 in half PPR. He averaged 21.3 touches and 66.3 percent of the offensive snaps, but when Bell got on the field, he dropped to 54.4 percent of the snaps, and the total touches dropped to 12.7. That is not going to help you if you want to be on the field and score fantasy points. The Chiefs also ranked 23rd in total rushing attempts, which makes sense when you have players like Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, and you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes. So when you're talking about this run game with the Kansas City Chiefs, this equates to only Clyde Edwards Elaire. So with Bell gone, and he's the only one there on the field now, and plus he should be behind a much more healthy offensive line, which they are bolstering not only to help Clyde Edwards Alaire, but also to help keep Patrick Mahomes um, off of his behind, where he was most of the time during the Super Bowl. Our expert consensus rankings have him at the RB15 spot in half PPR. I think that's a little low but we'll see how that goes. He also has a four-star strength of schedule, and his ADP is in the middle of the third round, which is also pretty good. All right, next up, we have the Baltimore Ravens running back, J.K. Dobbins. I don't love this at first. Like, when I first think of it, it's the committee backfield, it's Lamar Jackson, it's a lot of Gus Edwards, and again, like I mentioned in the beginning in this video, some of these rookies really disappointed. So I'm actually speaking to myself here when I'm saying that we shouldn't just completely discount these players simply because they disappointed us last year. This is still a run first offense, even though they did draft Rashad Bateman in the first round. I get that. But instead of having to split carries between Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, and Lamar Jackson. At least he gets rid of one of those guys, and he's going to be in his second year, which means he's going to feel a little bit more comfortable in this offense. Last year, he ran 191 routes compared to Gus Edwards' 78, and he finished uh, in the top seven in yards after contact per attempt last year, uh, as did Gus Edwards. So they're both incredibly efficient. But the thing with him that's so exciting about 2021 without having Mark Ingram there, which he really wasn't much there last year either, but still, when there's not another body on that field to be able to take some of that volume away from you, you can have a much more productive season. And the thing here is volume, like I mentioned before. 
This is a run first team. Even if Lamar Jackson is running, even if Gus Edwards is running, I think J.K. Dobbins will be able to outperform what he did last year, which was 134 carries and only 18 receptions. And we have heard from camp that he is making some waves when it comes to his pass catching ability in camp this offseason, so that's pretty exciting for him. Our expert consensus rankings have him at the RB16, and his ADP is also that early third round. So you're going to want to make a decision between Clyde Edwards-Alaire and J.K. Dobbins, so if you miss out on either one of those, at least you know that you have a solid RB2 option here that should, well, maybe not should, but has the opportunity to have a second year breakout. And moving right along, let's go to Antonio Gibson, running back for the Washington football team. Now, unlike these other players that we mentioned in this video already, Gibson didn't have a terrible year. He finished as the RB12 with 184.2 points over 14 games, so he averaged around 12.3 points per game. But there were some serious factors that were working against him. I mean, let's state the obvious here, it was very poor quarterback play, and there were a lot of different quarterbacks that he had to work with, so that doesn't help. He was also dealing with a lingering turf toe issue, which really bothered him in the last couple weeks of the season specifically. But you also have someone like JD McKissick, who is their pass-catching running back, which took away a lot of volume for Antonio Gibson, which doesn't make a lot of sense, because Antonio Gibson is a wide receiver turned running back. So the fact that his targets were so much lower than and J.D. McKissick. I don't really foresee that being sustainable in 2021, and he'll take a step forward in the right direction. But most importantly for Antonio Gibson is more stability within that offense, now that they have their new quarterback in Ryan Fitz. Patrick, who I also like very much because now we're going to have one guy, hopefully barring injury, instead of having a rotating carousel of three. His uh, expert consensus ranking is right at RB13, and he is also going in the early second round, which I don't think is too expensive because I do have a lot of faith in Antonio Gibson. If he was able to finish as an RB12 last year with all of these factors working against him, I think he's going to have a pretty darn good year this year. Who could ever forget about CeeDee Lamb from the Dallas Cowboys? It seemed like he kind of had, I don't want to know, living in the shadow moments of Justin Jefferson, like we mentioned in the beginning, who just exploded onto the fantasy scene. But CeeDee Lamb wasn't any slouch either. And like Antonio Gibson, CeeDee Lamb had to deal with three different quarterbacks as well. Andy Dalton, Garrett Gilbert, AAF shout out right there, and then Ben DiNucci of all people. So even with this struggle that he had and all of these factors working against him, very similar, like I said, to Antonio Gibson, he still finished with 74 receptions, almost a thousand yards. It was right at 935 and he had five receiving touchdowns in an offense that has Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper. Now, what is very exciting about this is that Dak Prescott is healthy and he will be back in 2021, which is great for CeeDee Lamb because in the first five weeks before Dak Prescott got hurt, he was the wide receiver 12 with Dak Prescott under center. And that is very exciting moving forward when you want to get a wide receiver and you can get him in the sixth round, which is very, very exciting when it comes to some serious value at the wide receiver position. So that wraps up five of our second year breakout candidates. And there are not just five that are coming into this class for 2021. So make sure you check out our website, fantasypros.com. You can also check out the article that I pulled some of these names from by our featured writer, Skylar Carlin. And also make sure you are following us at Fantasy Pros on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, so that you don't miss out on any of the content just like this that we're going to be throwing out all year long.